I've made over $200,000 this month trading different strategies. So just in crypto alone, this is mostly Bitcoin and Algorand. I've made $207,000 this month. Past week, it's up $90,000. Today, as we speak, it's currently up $13,000, $14,000. And then we go into FX. I have one account here. This is kind of just the account that I use to track my trades. It's kind of a burner account. Let me just go ahead and close all these positions here because I'm trading back on MetaTrader now. And this week I've taken an account from 50K to, we will see exactly what it is. Let's go check right now, now that all of these are closed out. Um, the account is currently at $61,000. So I've grown it from 50K to 61K. And you know what's crazy is I've literally called all these trades for free. The entries, the exits, explanation, literally everything live. I just do it live for free in my Telegram channel. It's the first link in the description of this video. I'll probably put it in the pinned comment as well or something. Um, and people may wonder why I seem so delusionally confident. The reason is, is because I just do very, very super high production quality analysis, nothing immature ever. And I've been doing it all live for the past six years. I've been showing literally everything. This was yesterday, $8,000 day. You could just follow this Telegram channel for free for a couple months. You literally don't even have to ever pay me a penny. I teach everything I know here for free on YouTube. And I call all my trades live in this Telegram channel. And really, it comes down to the fact that different market conditions and different markets altogether will sometimes require a different strategy to be able to be traded profitably. If you have a trend trading approach, it is obviously not going to work that well in markets that are ranging. If you have a range trading approach, it's not, it doesn't take a genius to figure out it's probably not going to work that great in trends. If you have a dollar cost averaging approach where you just literally add to losing trades at a set grid or at the next support resistance as, until it reverses, that's probably not going to work amazing in crypto market right now, which is just booming upwards and just not stopping at all. Context and nuance play huge keys in this. Have you ever found yourself following one single trading strategy religiously and then you notice all the other different trades that your intuition, your brain, your discretion, everything is like nudging at you inside saying, hey, that's a good trading opportunity. But then the logical side of your brain says, no, 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 we can't take that it doesn't fit the strategy, it has to fit the freaking rules. Let me give you a very simple example to prove to you you're never going to be profitable following just one trading strategy with very clearly defined rules. The simple explanation is go and code those into an algorithm, define them through black and white objective means, code them into an algorithm. I have never seen one work in eight years, it's over, over eight years of my trading experience that has actually yielded long-term profitability using stop losses. Not one time. Go out and find one. I dare you. Maybe there's some exist now, no, no, maybe the quantitative firms are able to do it. However, there's also strategies perform different in every market environment. My approach to crypto has been for a very long time, although I have traded futures at times the same way I trade FX, but my overall approach to crypto is just buy when things are down and hold until things go up and then sell and then rinse and repeat the process. It's been the same thing for years. And my, my approach to trading Forex has been more or less buy when I think it's going to go up, sell when I think it's going to go down, and then use some sort of a risk structure, whether that risk structure is dollar cost averaging or hedging or using a stop loss or using a pseudo martingale approach to add with a multiplier at the next zones to get it to reverse and hopefully come out in profit and letting the stats play out. All of these are different things which depending on the context of the trading opportunity can be utilized to not just my advantage, but to your advantage. And the way you learn this is through simply getting experience. Have you ever been about to take a trade and then you look and you see, okay, normally I should buy here, put the stop loss here, target up here, You've got your very handsome, sexy one to three risk to reward ratio, but then something doesn't feel right. Something like you look at the market and like, maybe it looks like it's going sideways. Is this really the best time to buy? But then you think to yourself, you're like, no, 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 the strategy says I should buy right here. And that's what my strategy says. And I'm buying at the 61.8 Fibonacci Wagyu beef bullish Kobe stick candlestick fair value invalidation gap liquidity spike stop hunt martingale liquidation strategy. And this is my entry and, and then the stop loss is below here and the targets up here, but it doesn't feel right. 
it's even worse whenever you start taking stop out after stop out after stop out. There are some trades I will use a stop loss on. There are some trades I will just add to them if they lose. There are some trades I will size differently on depending on what I think the risk is. There are trades where I will look at them and I'm like, hey, I think it will be better to use this position size because if I enter here and price goes up to here against me, I want to be able to add at this next zone because if it doesn't bounce here, it's 50-50. It could go to the next zone and then it could bounce there. And then if it doesn't do that, it'll go to the next zone and then maybe bounce there. So it's like giving myself enough chances for price to bounce. There are some situations I'll use those in. There are other situations where if there's nothing above price, nowhere I think price could reverse and there's no way to control risk, I'll just put a stop loss on the other side of the zone and let it play out. There's other trades where if I'm not sure, I have literally have no clue, I'll just hedge. I'll just hedge the trade and then I'll let it play out and then I'll wait for the next trading opportunity on the pair and then I'll manage the hedge by either adding to the position or removing one of the profitable positions and letting the other one play out. There's multiple different ways to do it and there's no right or wrong way. The thing that's crazy is that I've found that most people trade better out of pure intuition, meaning not looking at a chart and saying, I am buying because price is pulled back to the 50% Fibonacci Wagyu beef bullish candlestick gap pattern thing. And then uh, it's the EMA is slanted upwards at a 45 degree angle. And then the, the moving average for the 10 and the 15 have crossed and all this crap, right? People say they get all these rules in place that dictate a trading opportunity. But guess what? It's roughly 50-50. You're right half the time and you're wrong half the time and you cannot predict price. Even if you have a, like a 60% win rate, I would still call that 50-50 because it's going to be weeks where you have a 40% win rate and it probably averages out to roughly be that anyway. And in terms of like entering randomly on the chart and price goes up or down to the stop or target and it's everything's a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, 50% chance is going to go up to the stop, 50% chance is going to go down to the profit target and same thing vice versa. With that being said, I've seen people perform so much better by just literally not even having any rules and just saying like, I don't know, it looks like an uptrend. Let me just buy right here. And if it goes down against me, I'll figure it out. I'll get out at a loss, you know, I'll size myself accordingly. So if it goes here, I know how much I'm risking on the trade. Other people will say, you know what, it's in an uptrend, but there's a major support resistance level lower here. Let me just size appropriately so that if it goes down to there, I'll be in a $1,000 drawdown. Then I can add another position. So then if it bounces, I'll get out at break even or even a net profit. But if it breaks, then now I'll lose $2,000 instead of $1,000. And I accept that risk, right? It's pre-planning things in a very basic way to say, this is, what, this is where my entry is. And this is what I think is going to happen. And then here's how I'm controlling risk. For years, I've spouted this thing from the top of the mountains. I've been playing a war drum and there's like thousands of traders below me like going into battle and I've just been yelling from the top of the mountain with like one of those little trumpet things. I've been saying, keep things simple and control risk. I'm to the point now, I don't even think you have to keep things simple. I just think you literally just have to control risk. Look at trading for a second. <laughs> trading is the same thing as going to a casino in many ways. The definition of gambling is placing a wager on an uncertain outcome. What are you doing in trading? Are you certain about the outcome? If the answer is no, if you say yes, just leave this video. I've no, there's no way to save you. <laughs> but if the answer is no, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. It's always going to be uncertain. Then what are you doing in trading? You're literally placing a monetary bet, a wager on that outcome that is uncertain, which is the definition of gambling. So in a lot of ways, it's not much different from going to the casino. You may have a different strategy for playing blackjack than you do poker, than you do literally being like full degen playing the slot machines and any other games like Baccarat and a bunch of different stuff. When it comes to using the appropriate strategy given the context, you learn it with experience. And you also learn it by not operating or reasoning based on analogy or metaphor or looking at everyone else's stupid opinion online. Do you guys want to see some stupid opinions? Go into the comment section of this video and watch everyone argue about everything that I've said in this video. You'll see some pretty stupid stuff. And looking at other people's opinions really impacts your decision making in a negative way because it goes in and it murders your intuition. It murders you doing what's best in your own self-interest because you're looking at what other people think are best. And one thing I've learned very, very clearly in the past few years of me trading is that very few people want to actually think for themselves. It's very, very unfortunate. I try to motivate people to think for themselves by helping them develop their own trading approach and get experience and data to show them what works in practice and they can just do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Everyone's going to end up trading differently. But most people don't want to do that work. 
they you go to become a doctor and it takes you 12 years you go to become an attorney it takes you six years you go to do all these other high level skill sets in life that pay a ton of money and everybody knows yes there's a ton of work involved it costs a lot of time oftentimes money oftentimes work and everything and mental agony and stress and you're not even guaranteed to be successful like so many people drop out of medical school so many people who go into college with the intention of going to medical school do not even go to medical school it's difficult, but yet people come and approach trading, this thing where you see gurus claiming to make millions of dollars online, myself included. And that being said, you will then look at that and think, wow, trading is easy because so many people are doing it. Because you're seeing a sliver of people on the internet trying to sell you something, trying to say, hey, buy my course. Look, I'm a billionaire in trading. Buy my course. I'm going to teach you the, the keys to the kingdom, all the secrets, right? There's no secrets. Literally, the secret is just go and literally get some experience trading for a year or two and track what you're doing. And like, don't look at other people's like uh, opinions online. The, the way I trade, I've, I've openly shared everything I know for free on YouTube. There's not a single thing in the courses that I used to have that you can't find for free in my YouTube videos. The course is kind of organized a little bit better, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's all for free on my YouTube channel. Additionally, the free Telegram channel I run that I've been running for over six years at this point. I I've shared all my live trades, analysis, insights, everything over there for like the past six years. You know, more or less. There's been some spells where I've taken some time off, but more or less I posted every single thing in there. And right now this is exactly what I'm doing. Literally every single thing. This is like, this is a bona fide glorified signals group that's for free that I do every, all the information here on YouTube, and then you can watch it live in my Telegram. I don't even charge for anything else. I have a private Discord community with just people who are high level interested in actually learning that I charge for, and that's literally it right now. All my other products are closed. I don't even have them. I do like 90% of the stuff I do out here for free. And the reason I do it out here for free is because it helps more people and it allows more people to get out of this stupid rabbit hole of going down and learning all of this stupid nonsense that is not necessary. And it also gets people out of the hole of not being able to think for themselves. Because me telling you right here, there's no secrets. Price is 50-50. It goes up or down. You don't need to do all this crazy, complicated stuff to be profitable. What that then incentivizes you to do is it incentivizes you to go out and actually start getting the experience to learn on your own. You will learn bits and pieces online from YouTube, from Google, from forums, from my Telegram channel. But ultimately, you getting profitable is going to be a result of your trading system and you developing it and you getting the experience to know when to use the right strategy to, given the context. And when I say strategy, I say that word loosely. It's more of like an approach. There's no, there's no black and white strategy. Everything is arbitrary and subjective. Someone could say, that's a resistance level. The same person could say, I don't see a zone there. I see a resistance level like five pips above it. Or I see a support level 20 pips below that. Or I see this and that, da, 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 and it's all random and it's all arbitrary and it's not useful. The thing that makes a manual trading approach profitable is discretion, experience, intuition. It's you literally developing that skill set as a result of your experience to be able to know when, what you should do and what you shouldn't do given the situation and context. It's like a flow state. It's like people call it this, this energy, you know, whatever the hell it is. It's literally just experience. You get enough experience, you know, hitting my microphone. <laughs> you get enough experience to know that whenever you get into this context here, like this would be better to use a stop loss. This one would be better to hedge and then wait for that zone. And then I'll manage it up there. This one will be better to just not do anything and just let it just waver around until something more clear sets up, then do something. This setup would be better if you wait for it to go to the next zone and then just add to the losing trade at that next zone, thinking it'll bounce there and you can get out at break even or a small profit. Even if you were wrong, completely wrong about the trading opportunity, you could still make money like using like creative systems for managing risk. Ultimately, I still believe you should keep things simple and control risk, but something that's really come to light more than ever is that different market conditions, different markets, and different situations require a different approach, a different strategy. And it is okay for you to exercise those different strategies slash approaches given the context and the market environment you're trading. The only way you learn this is from experience. If you want to fast track your experience and hopefully learn it a little bit quicker, join my free Telegram channel. It's free. You can be in there in the next 10 seconds. Click the first link in the description of this video, or I might put it in the pinned comment. Maybe if it's down there, you can check and see. That being said, my vote for you is that you'll take the time to get experience trading. Trading is very difficult. It is very risky. Most people lose money and you will probably continue to lose money. But there are a portion of you watching this video that will make it work. And while it is not easy, trading is certainly worth it. I've been a living testament of that for eight years. Hope you've enjoyed this video.
See ya.